All right, what do we got going on at Penn State? A federal hazing lawsuit puts Penn State back in the spotlight nationally. The lawsuit filed on behalf of former Penn State football player Isaiah Humphreys, seen here in this picture from ESPN, played during the 2018 season. He alleges that he and other teammates were hazed in the locker room by other players while naked and told, I'm going to Sandusky you. Reference to Jerry Sandusky, who you know was convicted of child sexual assault. Humphrey says he reported the hazing to coach James Franklin, but no action was taken. Humphreys has since transferred to another school, and the Center County District Attorney investigated, and no charges were filed. But is this the end of it? Attorney Joe Marone is here. I don't know if we just did your whole segment for you, <laughs> uh, but let's go back and talk about some of the sure. Isaiah Humphreys. Uh, his dad played at Penn State, too, didn't yeah, he? Lenny. Lenny yeah, Lenny. Play, Lenny played. He played pro ball. Uh, played for the Colts. For the Colts. Yeah, he banged around a little bit, but he's a pro ball player, and he was vested in Penn State. So, like Alex and I were, were talking about, you would think that his son then would know about stuff that goes on in a locker room. But because what his he, father probably told him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I what think, is he saying that happened to him? Well, I think he's saying a bunch of uh, Penn State football players. Now he was a scholarship player on the team. He was a freshman. A bunch of upperclassmen continuously hazed him, did some really degrading acts to him on a consistent basis. He reported these events. Here's the, here's the problem. This, this is a civil lawsuit. You've got to remember, now Penn State's been in the spotlight. They've been under enormous scrutiny. Sandusky, uh, the, the Piazza case. So they've, they've implemented policies and procedures. They have a whole office of us that's called sexual misconduct for, for, for prevention. They have a student policy. They did investigations. They did interviews. They came back with nothing. They also have their own police department. The police department also did an investigation, and they came back with nothing. The, finally, the DA's office took the case, reviewed it, and, and decided no criminal charges. So these were the actions of, of uh, this individual by filing a civil suit, and that's what you're down to. Civil but, suit. But right. The um, Isaiah's attorney is saying that they don't know fully the type of investigation that was done by the university since it was passed to them first. Mm -hmm. And just because they didn't pr file criminal charges doesn't mean that there weren't things happening that shouldn't have been happening, right? Well, well listen, there's two sides to every story, right? right. This, is, this is their account, meaning this is Humphrey's account. Mm -hmm. You can rest assured that this school did a thorough investigation. They're not going to hold themselves out there where they're going to have any type of cover-up at this point. Of all every, schools. Of all schools, right? But the, how do you prove it? How do you prove, well, here, unless there's like microphones in the locker room, that kids said or didn't say stuff to that. Well, you know, it's interesting. You read the complaint. It talks about the fact that it wasn't just uh, this individual, Damian Barber. There was other players involved. Mm -hmm. And and they'd be curious to see what happens when they take their depositions in the civil case, what information they dig up. Now, one of the players took a lie detector test and passed. So I don't think the evidence is going to equate to hazing. I think there was a level of harassment here. I don't. I think that this fellow just wasn't happy at the school. Things weren't going his way. He was a scholarship player. I think they wanted more out of Franklin, the head coach, who got sued, by the way. They, they sued the head coach. They said they didn't, he didn't live up to his duties to by protect By you mean Humphreys? Humphreys or? sued Franklin, okay. the head coach. He well, said, he's suing Penn State, the coach, and players, that's and right. some players. One player. He sued one, one player. And I think that's what that one player is probably the person who has the most culpability. But he's going to try to bring in other players. They're going to take their depositions. They're going to do investigation. And if they can get enough evidence to show that it may have happened, they're going to get some money. That's what this thing's all about. It's about money. And the money would come and, from Penn State. And you so. can rest assured it'll be a confidentiality agreement. Mm -hmm. It'll be signed. It'll pay some money. And he's going off to another school. And, and again, this is your oh, opinion. He's already at, looking at, at Cal Berkeley. Yeah, he's right? already at another I think school. he's already there. He's mm -hmm. out of there. And I think that's why. I think this is a little bit sour grapes, too, as well. But I just. I that's guess, your opinion. Yeah. Well, it's not my opinion. Material. Listen, there was a thorough investigation done by this school. But There's I, no way this school is going to uh, let this go uncovered. Yeah. But. You know, I think a lot of people prefer an objective person to do an investigation as opposed to the school itself it, when they don't want another scandal. They, they, another scandal comes on Penn State. The oh. trustees will go out of their mind. Mm -hmm. So you can rest assured that there is no wrongdoing as far as hazing. Was there harassment? Was there misbehavior? But where's Maybe. the line? Where's the line between harassment and hazing? Well, that's why they filed a civil suit. They're going to do their own digging. Right. And, and Humphreys took it in the matter in his own hands. He hired a lawyer and he sued them. Yeah. Which is probably the smart By the thing way, to do. We did get a uh, statement from Penn State. The university says the Office of Sexual Misconduct Prevention and Response and the Office of Student Conduct carried out investigations of the plaintiff's claims independent from the athletic department. In addition, Penn State police investigated related allegations and forwarded the results to the Center County DA. The DA reviewed the case and decided that no charges would be pursued. So Penn State is saying, like you're saying, Joe, that they did their due diligence and they didn't find anything. And I don't think they're going to want to have to stand on those words and then look foolish and let it blow up in their That's face. True. So we'll see what happens. Happens. We Let us know when you're here. I will. Yes. All right, Joe. Thank you, good Joe. To see you. Always as good always. to see you guys. Great mm -hmm. time, man. Oh, you got it.